Did you know that many successful drugs we have been using until nowadays come from natural resources? For examples, penicillin is originally obtained from penicillium molds, especially P. chrysogenum and P. rubens. Quinine from the bark of the cinchona tree. Salicylic acid from the willow bark. Morphine and codeine from the poppy seed and many more. Also, many more potent drugs were developed and synthesized based on the structure of naturally occurring compounds. That's why, to date, we're still actively exploring and looking for active compounds from natural sources such as plants for medicinal purposes. So how do we exactly isolate and find the identity of these compounds? Let's take a look at a case sample. This is Prapto. Prapto is a pharmacist and researcher working in an R&D department of a pharmaceutical industry. He wants to find out what compound in plant X has the activity in diminishing the glucose level in diabetic patients. First, he collects the plant materials, then dry them and grind them into powder. Active compounds are extracted from the powder using a solvent or a mixture of solvents. To selectively extract the compounds of interest, the extract is then partitioned, using other solvents to yield several fractions. These different fractions are then tested for their activity on altering sugar or glucose level. The selected fraction with the highest activity is then subjected to further characterization for identifying the active compounds. If the fraction contains multiple compounds, then Prapto can do a preparative chromatography to separate these compounds from one another. Then, to identify the mystery compound, Prapto can use a set of spectrometric techniques. Using infrared spectroscopy, Prapto can find what functional groups are present in his compound or molecule. These different functional groups absorb light at different wavelengths depending on atoms making up the molecule and the bond types. Using mass spectrometry, Prapto can find the molecular weight of the compound and its possible structure based on the fragmentation pattern. Using a soft ionization method such as chemical ionization, we can find the molecular ion at the rightmost of the spectrum, which tells us about the molecular weight of our compound. Based on the mass of fragment ions located on the left side, we can perform subtraction and find out the fragment loss and what molecule or radical ion was released during the fragmentation. Using a hard ionization technique such as electron impact, we can increase the fragmentation and estimate the structure of the smaller fragments based on their mass per charge. Due to extensive fragmentation in this technique, often, we are not able to observe the molecular ion. Using nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, Prapto can find the possible structure of the compound based on chemical shifts, which tell about the environment in which the atoms are present, and the integral, which tells how many atoms are present in that chemical environment. Based on the splitting pattern of the peaks, we can tell how many atoms are present in the adjacent environment. For example, a doublet in proton NMR means there is one hydrogen atom bound to the adjacent C atom. By combining all this information together, then Prapto can figure out what the identity of his mystery compound is. Not only are spectrometric techniques useful for Prapto's research activity, they are also useful for finding identities of mystery compounds in crime scenes, drug abuse, and analysis of contaminants in pharmaceutical products, food, and environmental samples. Pretty useful, aren't they? Want to learn more about these cool techniques? Tune in to our next videos for more information.